first visualization shows the external and middle auditory pathway. This structure is not responsible for hearing, but for changing external acoustic energy into electrical potential. The acoustic wave reaches the ear canal to the eardrum. It is put into vibration and these vibrations are transmitted via the ossicles to the inner ear of the cochlea, the last ossicle attached to the cochlea. The stirrup moves the fluid that fills the inside of the cochlea, in which the small auditory cells are immersed. The auditory hair cells are built to move under the vibration caused by the fluid. The hearing hair cells are divided into external and internal. The outer ones have three rows and their function is to amplify the vibrations or inhibit them when the sound is too loud. They provide the dynamic response of the inner auditory hair cell from 0 to 120 decibels. The inner hair cell is the one whose movement activates the production of electrical potential that travels from the cell nucleus to the auditory nerve and up to the neurons. If we lose the outer hearing auditory cell, the activity of the inner hair cell is weaker and it needs a louder sound to stimulate it. While if we lose the inner hair cell, which informs the brain what sound we hear, we are deaf at a given frequency. From the inner auditory cells come 20 fibers of the auditory nerve, which directly connect to the first neurons, whose goal is to analyze and convert the signal of electric potential into the impression of sound we hear. The hair cell's job, therefore, is to change the vibration into electrical potential and the neuron's job is to change the electrical potential into the target sound impression. So how does tinnitus arise? Knowing how the auditory pathway is already built, let's move on to how tinnitus is formed. We can lose hearing cells. When we lose them with age, we say that there is a gradual hearing loss that occurs over time. This means that the external auditory cells die off one by one over a long period of time. The gradual death of cells also leads to a decrease in the activity of the inner auditory cells which in turn leads to a decrease in the electrical potential sent to the neurons. Neurons analyze the activity of the cell, and if they notice a decreasing trend of cell activity, they initiate the so-called apoptosis process regulated by decreasing cell activity. Neurons begin to be removed as the activity of the cell decreases. The fewer extracellular cells and the lower the activity of the intracellular cell, the fewer neurons. The same happens with the company when the revenue decreases. Employees are laid off to match the revenue to costs. Same thing the nervous system does in the process of adaptation. The worse we hear, the fewer neurons should support the lower activity of the inner cell. During gradual hearing loss, the nervous system has time to make changes in the organization and adjust the number of neurons to the deteriorating hearing and dying auditory cells. The patient hears worse with gradual hearing loss, but does not have tinnitus. We know from current clinical studies that cells can not only die gradually, but also suddenly and abruptly. It is the sudden hearing loss 
that activates the excitement in neurons that we call tinnitus. As we explained earlier, the nervous system needs time to make changes in the structure and number of neurons when there is a reduction in the number of hair cells. However, if hair cells in state of months die in one second, we are dealing with a kind of phantom pain, where one structure dies so quickly that it leaves no time for changes in the other structure, resulting in no change in the structure of neurons, despite the fact that the hearing hair cells have been permanently, violently destroyed. If an inner cell suddenly and abruptly stops sending an electrical potential, not only are the neurons not removed, but in addition, the lack of activity of the inner cell is misinterpreted. If we suddenly turn off the light, there is a moment in which we see nothing, and only after a time we begin to see. This process is called homeostasis, means that the neurons of the visual pathway increase their activity in the dark to help us see better. Darkness is a situation of increased attention. We see less, we can hit something in an easier way can attack us. In the dark, the neurons work faster to help us see better in worse conditions. It is the same with silence. Sudden silence means more constant signals in the form of crickets and quiet signals against the background, of which an intermittent signal also quiet could mean danger. Just as in darkness so in silence, the auditory pathway system accelerates the higher speed of neurons to even better and more accurately analyze the short-term signal, which could mean danger against the background of monotonous constant long-term signals of silence. Neurons, in response to this misinterpretation of silence, increase their speed to help us analyze rapidly changing signals over time against a background of slowly changing signals generating more noise for the work which manifests as noise. Neurons of the cochlear nuclei that make direct contact first with the auditory nerve and cells are the loudest walking neurons in the entire nervous system. Increasing the working speed of these neurons even by a small amount already results in a louder working noise of these neurons and the tinnitus.